Welcome. Good morning, everybody. Well done for, uh, for getting in. Particularly, uh, I've heard from various different broadcasters here, the Sky Posse was out till four o'clock in the morning, so salute you. Uh, and I don't understand why with, with Stuart, it was, I know last year it was exactly the same at 9.15, wasn't it? I don't know what it is. I'm just like clearly a sobering up. <laughs> well, um, I'm, I'm hoping over the next hour or so that uh, we can not only cover uh, your achievements uh, over the last, last 12 months, but also where you're going to take uh, your various channels. Um, and uh, also, of course, we'll be taking some questions uh, towards the end of the se uh, this session. Uh, but let's kick off, first of all, if we may, by uh, uh, running a VT of uh, some of the best bits of the past 12 months. Is it proud of that? No, I'm, I'm gutted how it's all played out. Yeah, no, I'm so proud of it. Really, really proud of it. I mean, it's, um, it's funny as a channel head, uh, you know, you, never, you very rarely take stock because it's just relentless. And, um, and, you know, if you choose to, you can always be looking back a year or thinking about the ratings for the past fortnight or, you know, projecting what you're doing with drama in two years' time. So you very rarely kind of take a moment. But, yeah, yeah, I'm so pleased. It feels really different to, um, to the sky I turned up to. So. What's changed? What is it that, that you've <clears> done <throat> that you see there that's made that change? I think, um, I think the starting point was setting our expectations different. I think there'd been a sense at Sky that Sky Entertainment would just be fine and would try to do big things, but actually our level of what we'd be happy with was okay. And one of the things that's clear in an increasingly noisy world with loads of channels and the terrestrials, most of them being great most of the time, um, is that fine isn't good enough. And, you know, everyone talks about in going forward either very cheap long-running uh, intimate stuff on YouTube will work, or the super scale Game of Thrones will work, but the mediocre will just disappear. I think Sky One, which is what I turned up to do, just felt mediocre. Um, and so the starting point was for us to say, let's not compare ourselves to, um, with the greatest of respect to, to Zai and, and the guys, let's not compare ourselves to ITV2 and BBC3 and E4, let's compare ourselves to BBC1 and ITV1. And as soon as you change the goalposts, it means that you become what we like to say, sort of famously fussy. And so you're fussy about who you work with, uh, what expectations you have of them. Uh, you place expectations on, on yourself as a sort of leader to try and make sure you're hiring brilliant people who, um, who can teach you stuff and inspire you. Um, but I think it starts with changing the goalposts. Um, and is that, is that happened even higher up from you because there, there is a view, a widely held view perhaps, that Sky's purpose is to sell dishes, to, to drive subscriptions, and, and that football uh, and pay-per-view is, is, is the way of driving that, and the entertainment wing, if we like, has been of less importance. And that, is there, Has there been a, a shift in thinking higher up in the company? Definitely. I mean, just to be really clear, you know, Sky's a business. We're there to make money for shareholders. Um, I think one in three people in Britain have a pension that has Sky shares. So if you value your pension, you'd value the success of Sky. I think also the contribution Sky makes to Britain, you know, employs... That... That's a great marketing tool, by the way. <laughs> well, no, but, but seriously... Buy when... Sky or die in penury. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> But, you know, I think there's a, there's a real... It was interesting, really interesting talking to Liz, uh, hearing, hearing from Liz last night and talking to her afterwards that I think there's a sort of um, willful naivety in British TV that people often seem to behave that creative endeavour happens at all costs. And sometimes, certainly in the past, people who were terrible at budgets were just seen as creative. Oh, forgive them, you know, they just can't add up. And, um, oh, they've just got to have this set. Why? Well, just because it means so much. And they did it kind of in a financially reckless way. I think one of the things that's great, uh, working with so many indies, and when I worked in the indie, indie sector, and one of the things that's great at Sky is you can't have um, creative endeavour without sort of things making sense as a budget. So, so that's the only reason I mention about. And, and a lot of people don't seem to, don't seem to realise, don't seem to get that Sky's a business. We're there to make money. Um, so, so that's the first bit. I think second bit is most people who've got sport, uh, most people who love sport have either got Sky or made a decision not to get Sky. Uh, similarly, movies. And so there was definitely a decision, sort of, I'd say about five years ago, that the next pillar of how we can tempt people over to Sky or retain people currently at Sky is through entertainment. And, you know, the bar is so high in Britain. You look at what BBC drama do, it's phenomenal. And, um, you know, ITV Entertainment, the X Factor, is of a huge scale. So it's not as if we're competing in a, a soft market. 
Um, and it's left for me and the team to work out either where we can be opportunistic or where we can be creatively different. And, um, uh, you know, certainly uh, if, uh, if you see a touch of cloth uh, coming up this, uh, in a few days' time, Charlie Brooker's silly airplane comedy, you'll see it's really creatively different to comedy that's out there, which can be smug or Oxbridge or white male. Um, uh, and uh, you look at Hunderby that's on next week on Sky Atlantic, it's, it shows that we back creative endeavour and creative risk. Um, we don't just say it, as some channels do. We do it and transmit it. As, as, this, as this part of the discussion is reflecting on the successes of the past 12 months, what about ratings? And there, there is this sort of disparity between Sky's own ratings and everybody else's ratings. Yeah. Sky's ratings suggest the channels are all doing very well. Yeah. And broadly speaking, other ratings are suggesting they're not doing so well. What's the truth? Are you happy with the ratings as they stand? S totally. I mean, Sky One is up 38% in 38% uh, across the board year on year. That's pretty phenomenal, I think, and that's why I'm knackered. Um, uh, and that's amazing. It's, it's testament to how hard people have worked. I think. Um, but, but the starting point for us on how we measure success, which is a sort of key thing, and people need to get their heads around whenever they make stuff for us, is Sky has decided to be a subscription business. So we could have just been free to air and we've got free to air channels, but we decided to be a subscription business. So uh, the, the bulk of our revenue, so 90% I think it is, is from people subscribing to us. And as soon as, a bit like HBO, as soon as you accept we're a subscription business, then the goalposts are very, very different. Um, our main aim is to get people to come to Sky, and 23 million, half, half, almost half the population have got Sky, or people at Sky to stay at Sky. And the number of people who leave Sky is, I think, uh, one of the lowest... Uh, the number of people who leave, it's called churn, the number of people who leave every year is one of the lowest in the world. Ours is like 10% of our subscribers leave every year. Virgin, it's, I think, it's 17. Um, so that's the first thing. We need to get people to the platform, and when they're there, they need to love it. We need to give them things every single week they love. But, you know, it'd be disingenuous for me to say ratings don't matter. Um, however, the overnights are only part of the story, and it'd be... Um, frankly, a bit, a bit thick of people to just go on overnights. I'm not calling you thick, you know, Thank Matthew. You. I'm just saying generally some commentators who just go on overnights are a bit thick. Because, um, you know, from a company that's, like, invented a PVR and spent a lot of money on Sky Go, which is sublime, I think, or on Sky Anytime or Sky Anytime Plus, we spend a lot of money on that. Um, it doesn't make sense then to just, just judge one moment on one platform. So what we do is we look at the ratings of a show and then the people who recorded and watched that show and then we look at who watched the repeat of that show and also who watched on Anytime and Anytime Plus. Um, so a, com a complete umbrella of all the ratings. Yeah, I mean, what it boils down to is value and volume and that's what I get bonus on. OK, OK. <laughs> <laughs> do all right, presumably. <laughs> don't know. You, you uh, judge by what I'm wearing. I don't have any laces on, so maybe. <laughs> um, talking... Uh, with money in mind, um, one of the most astonishing things I think about Sky as a company was what it paid for uh, Premier League this time round. I mean, the nine on two point four billion mm. pounds. Um, lots of rumours around the festival that that is impacting on your budgets and on the on the budgets of, of those immediately below you on the different channels. Is it? No. So, let me take a, a run at this. Um, on um, previous places I've worked, there was um, people would have a kind of moral issue about what they spent on a particular thing. And they would hilariously come up with things like um, 1.5 billion. That's an awful lot to spend on X. Uh, at Sky, it's, it's a business. So we would look at revenue uh, something might bring in and whether it makes sense to buy it. And actually, it made sense to pay that for the Premier League and we were happy. You know, the atmosphere in Sky was, was, that's a lot of money, but actually brilliant because sport is the driver of Sky. And the only reason I can commission the things I do and the team commission the things we do and indies, you know, get this huge import of money into the industry is because of sport on Sky. You know, that, that's why we're spending up to £600 million by 2014. Think, when, when the Premier League thing happened, it was about two weeks uh, after I'd just got my new job. And <clears throat> if anyone works with me, uh, uh, anyone who's worked with me will know <clears throat> I'm pretty hands-on. And... Um, and certainly, I wanted to get stuck in on all the channels. I wanted to make sure that they have a strategy that I'm happy with. Um, 
I didn't want them commissioning shows that, I'd, uh, that I didn't like or didn't fit a strategy. And so I really got stuck in. So the first week, um, I got all the channels together and the commissioners and said, we're sort of battening down the hatches. We went through a whole list of shows, either decommissioned them or knocked them into next fiscal. Um, uh, we recomm- quickly recommissioned some. I think uh, some indies who were unhappy said, oh, clearly it's because of the Premier League. Yeah. <clears throat> I was like, no, phoned a couple of them myself and said, you know, the timing is odd. It's a lot of money, but we've publicly said it's six, we're going to spend 600 million by 2014. Um, and one thing Sky is amazing at is money. So, um, you know, uh, the other thing to say, and I don't mean to sort of bore, am I probably boring everyone here, but, um, but it's a bit like running, a, I need to boil everything down to real idiot terms. And it's a bit like, you know, running a news agent, I suppose. If more people come into the news agents over the next five years and spend more money, then I can go out and buy laces. Um, uh, you know, if people don't come in, then obviously I'm not going to go buying laces. Unlike, uh, you know, the, B- the brilliant BBC that's got a guaranteed income, we don't. And if you turn up to Sky thinking it's guaranteed, uh, that's, you're going to find, you know, within a few days that, that that's not the case. Um, what is guaranteed is we'll spend 600 million by 2014, but certainly I hold all the channel budgets and the genre budgets, and it makes for a collaborative atmosphere and not a kind of... Uh, land grabby one, which, which is important to me. Okay. Um, carrying on the money theme of sorts uh, into talent, I mean, um, it wouldn't be blowing smoke up your ass. I mean, it's quite obvious you've done very well with, with, with talent by spending a, a lot of money, presumably. Is that what draws the talent in, that the checkbook, because you can't deliver the ratings, so it must be the money, right? Oh, that's interesting. Well, I've just, hopefully I've just explained the ratings thing, but I can, I can go well, back no, over well, the ratings. I, I mean, <laughs> in terms of, of, of the multi-million audiences they might get on, on, on BBC One or ITV, and indeed I mean, some of these names that are, are well established on those channels. channels yeah, I mean, I, I'm sort of pretty happy addressing this head on. I thought when the chairman of the BBC and the DG said, um, you know, Sky are doing well because, uh, because of the money, I just thought, that is so pathetic. I think what you, you think that... Uh, very well-paid talent will come to Sky for an extra five grand an episode. Or you think there's, there can't be any other reason why someone could work at Sky, not because of the relationships I've had for 20 years in the industry, and actually forgetting the fact I commissioned Gavin and Stacey and was very close to Ruth. People think, what, why would Ruth come to Sky? Not because of that relationship, not because of Lucy Lumsden. Or is, it, is it true with Ruth Jones? It's because of money. That, but, but what a load tr- of shit. Is it I true with Ruth Jones that... that I, th- I think you actually said this publicly before, that, that nobody else had even taken her out for lunch, that she would, no one was actually working. I mean, I, I don't know her dining habits. I just know that, <laughs> that when I phoned up Ruth and said, what's in your head? What, what are you up to? And she was like, oh, hi, Stuart, how are you doing? I was like, yeah, good. Should, should we meet up? She was like, oh, yeah, cool. So we met um, and met at the Ivy, me, her and David, her partner. I think she's a genius. I think she's a creative genius. I love being around people who have flair and imagination and, uh, and a sense of risk and a cr- sense of creative endeavour. That's what I get off on in life. And so it's a total pleasure meeting her. We talked about the world, about women, about what she loves writing. We talked about TV. We talked a bit about her frustrations, but I'm not a really negative person. And uh, it just bores me talking about um, where things are going wrong. We don't really do that much at Sky, to be honest. We, so it's pretty forward, you know, pretty positive. And, um, and I said, I'd lo- how about a Roseanne? I'd love a Roseanne. It's amazing there's not a Roseanne in Britain. And um, she thought about it, came back with Stella, and it's brilliant. And instead of just going for six half hours, we instantly went straight for 10 one hours. So that was completely supporting talent. We're, we've done a second, second series. She's got a session where she's going to make an announcement. Uh, so I'm not making any announcements. Um, <laughs> just pronouncements. And, um, <laughs> and you know, she has um, developed a, an in, a bit of an industry in Wales, which wouldn't have happened without Sky's investment. Um, come, come, it let's... wasn't because we paid her more money. Do you feel you frustrated that, that, that people are still, that, that, that people don't recognise that then? You um, personally feel that? I know this sounds awful and probably sounds arrogant. I, it doesn't sort of factor into it. I don't really care. I, I, when they said that, we sort of laughed a bit for, um, uh, you know, Seven seconds. And um, there was this album cover that Beck once had, you know, the one with the shaggy dog on the front? Yeah. And uh, when he saw the album cover, he said, oh, that made me laugh for seven seconds. <laughs> so it's a joke among me and my friends, people only laugh for seven seconds. Anyway, so when we saw the thing in Media Guardian, and, <laughs> and, you know, the chairman of the BBC and the DG said, uh, well, Sky are overpaying. I mean, that's why, you know. Um, oh, really? It's not because we've got a very clear vision, because we don't leave scripts on our desk for a year and a half. 
because uh, we, we proactively go to major talent and say, come and do something fun. Charlie Brooker, pretty cynical guy. You think he'd come to Sky for just a bit more money? It's just ludicrous. So it doesn't really bother me because my obsession and genuine obsession is what, what we can do for people like me and my fam people like my family and people like my mates. Um, and it's, it's that relationship with a customer at Sky is a, a sort of paradigm shift to what it was at another broadcaster. So for instance, last week, um, everyone on the management team of Sky Living called a customer and spoke for like half an hour about what they want to do, what they like, what they don't like. You know, you speak to a customer while they're walking the dog. It was just, uh, just speaking directly to a customer. I had never done that in a previous place I'd worked. Presumably because you spoke to viewers before. Uh, no, no, didn't actually. Um, and you know, it's interesting because the viewer, um, the viewer relationship at, at other places, uh, it's, it's there, it's free, they'll tune on if they like it, they won't if they don't. As a customer, if you're parting with 20 quid, People don't part with 20 quid easily. You know, they won't walk into your shop out of niceness or because stuff in the shop is free. They'll walk, they'll walk in if they really love it. And if, if they're going to part with money, they really need to love your brand. So, um, but as well as that, we go to call centres. So probably once a month, we do a lot more stuff on what we call customer closeness. Um, uh, so, so that's what I sort of focus on. I, I tend not to focus, and one of the reasons I don't really like Edinburgh, to be honest, is I tend not to focus on what else is happening in the industry. Okay. Well, that, well, then, uh, and also because I get nervous on public platforms, that's the other, other reason I don't particularly like. Right. Um, with, with talent, I mean, exclusive deals used to be all a buzz you know, uh, a few years back. I, I believe there are only two existent at Sky, isn't there? Which Ross Kemp and Ashley Banjo. Uh, oh, right, Barney. Yeah, 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 that's true. So <laughs> is that something that, that may change? There may be more or less? No, I, I don't think... I think we'll... Um, uh, I, I mean, I'd, I'm not out to put people on exclusive deals. Um, if I say less, that sounds like which of Ashley and Ross am I taking off of an exclusive? And if I say there are more, it's like who are you going to sign up? Um, I, I, don't think, I don't think we need to put more people on exclusives. Okay. Um, talent versus format. Chickens is quite an interesting one. Oh, yeah. Because that one, uh, yeah. Channel 4 turned it down. Yeah, yeah. You picked it up. Yeah. Is that because of the talent or the show? Uh, blimey, it's so difficult to disentangle them because the talent are the yeah. show, you know what I mean? But... Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's not the first time we've done something like that. Um, uh, you know, Alan Partridge, great show. If, you know, I'm, I answer to viewers, we know they love Alan Partridge, let's get Alan Partridge and give them what they want. Uh, Gin C, this is Gin C, was a pilot BBC didn't, at the BBC. The BBC didn't want it. I thought it was a work of creative insanity. So it's like, let's go for it. Um, and, uh, and similarly with um, Chickens, it really made me laugh. And I sometimes think people over-intellectualise comedy. Um, there's a bit of a tradition, I think, in, in comedy in Britain that it's either very wordy or because it's come from a Radio 4 background, it's very clever, clever. And uh, sometimes along the way, people forget to make you laugh. And certainly the comedy I grew up with, like uh, a range of stuff, but everything from Faulty Towers to A Man With Two Brains to The Three Amigos, um, you know, most, most comedy I loved made me laugh. And Chickens just really made me piss myself laughing. <laughs> um, I thought it was brilliant. And I was amazed that Channel 4 turned it down. Uh, and I'll probably go further, and you can, I can hear the press office slightly clenching at this. <laughs> that, um, <clears throat> if I was at Channel 4 and talent who delivered my biggest hit in comedy for 15 years um, had an idea, uh, I would probably not just do a pilot and stick it out late at night. And having done that pilot and see they feel passionately about it, I probably would have gone to series, to be honest. And that's a difference between, uh, you know, me and David and, and Jay. Is that, is that also then because you operate within a different financial bubble, perhaps? Yeah, we, I mean, we definitely it, do. That's it, true, it, Matthew. Yeah, we do. Um, and, but I find I think, it increasingly hard to compare, in one sense, Sky with what everybody else is doing. Totally, because they it's, are, in, it's, it's just in its own different world. They are, they are definitely different, and we can probably take commercial risk um, uh, <clears throat> to a different degree than other broadcasters can because first and foremost, we, we're about the platform and driving uptake and keeping people happy uh, who've got Sky. Um, that said, I do think our relationships with talent, and you know, I would say this, but I think we, work, we put a premium on our relationships with talent. And it's, it would be really, really important to me that the guys behind the in-betweeners um, played on, in my playground. Um, even if that meant taking a punt on them for one series that might not work with the hope that it would come good eventually. I actually think chickens will really work for us. And it's what we did with, um, 
countless people, and it, it, it pays dividends. We did it with Steve Coogan when we commissioned uh, uh, Dr. Terrible's House of Horrible, um, which actually I really liked, but, um, but not as many people did. Um, and, you know, it pays can, dividends. Can, can now I, we've got a great relationship with Steve. I mean, Coogan's an in, uh, interesting one because, and it's not something I want to dwell on, but I, I, it would be uh, remiss of me if I didn't at least address it in some form, of course, which is the sort of... The Murdoch fallout and everything else. I mean, Coogan was arguably, along with Hugh Grant, one of the two biggest celebrity critics, and there yeah. he is on Sky. Yeah, I mean, that's... Was that difficult? I know it's... It, 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 is it a difficult sell, or, or do, do, do talent see it as a, a totally separate entity? They see it as a totally separate entity, and we do too. Um, you know, it's a completely separate company. I think Sky is very, very hot on values. I think when... I turned up to Sky, and I might have said it, uh, said it before, um, <clears throat> I was pretty surprised that um, it wasn't as muscular and aggressive and, um, as, as it can sometimes appear from outside. And, you know, we said uh, recently, it's, it's a bit akin to MI6, I think. Um, <clears throat> you know, if you're in the circle of trust, you're in the circle of trust, and people don't leak at Sky because it's a FTSE 100 company. People just don't leak. If they do, they get fired. And you know that, so it's a given. I think um, it's very, very open and collaborative within Sky. Um, people share extremely confidential documents with one another in Sky about future plans, about product development, about financial, uh, you know, financial uh, uh, risks and you know, experiments and stuff like that. Not financial experiments, you know, what, what we're going to invest in is yeah. what I mean. And, um, uh, and uh, so, so it's, you know, and what, but one of the things I was going to say is that they're very hot on is values. And I was really surprised when I got to Sky that it was full of a lot of nice people. I think when either commissioners come for the first time, they talk about how open and friendly it is. I think certainly being in a position that I'm in, a uh, position of sort of power to change how channel controllers can come across or teams can work, it's really important to me that... Um, People can bring their personal life to the table, and that's why recently I, I decided to talk about being gay. I think it's important to me that people can see I'm honest and open and, and actually where I completely will accept anyone, even homosexuals. Um, <laughs> that, I'm, just, um, I'm just thinking of uh, whether this chimes or not, whether you think this chime, what you're saying chimes with uh, Elizabeth Murdoch's uh, McTaggart yesterday of everything for a sort of higher purpose, a higher purpose. Definitely. I mean, it so, sound, you know, it's, it's funny, isn't it, in Britain, because you don't want to sound evangelical about a company or you don't, we don't really no. talk about values or, or sort of what you want to achieve in life because it's, it's built into our DNA to take the piss. Um, and it feels a bit um, Scientology-ish, you yeah. know, and cultish. But I think... I Although think... in case any Scientologists are here, of course, it's a religion we all deeply respect. And, <laughs> yeah. uh, but, um... just, for the, just in case lawyers are around. <laughs> but, um, yeah, because it's not a cult here, is it? No, it's, a no, it's definitely proper religion. A proper religion. The, um, uh, you know, I think this, the opening ceremony of the Olympics um, um, really changed the game, actually. Uh, you know, I don't know how often we have the Olympics. I'm not one of those people who knows facts like that. But... Um, but, um, once a lifetime, it seems to be, a, once a lifetime, seems to be yeah. an average. Uh, and, um, you know, it was a big cultural moment, and you can't underestimate it. Someone brilliantly defined what it is to be British um, uh, in all its shades. It defined what modern looks like. It reimagined uh, our history and the important bits of our history. Um, I think it, it, for the first time in years was playful and celebratory about the NHS. I mean, when has that happened? You know, it brought back um, things from all of our upbringing and from our literary past, like Mary Poppins type thing and, and J.K. Rowling, and made them current. And it, I was felt, it inclusive without being naff, wasn't it? it was, yeah, oh, it, I felt incredibly yeah. proud. And I think, I think I wasn't alone in thinking the Olympics was going to be a bit embarrassing. Mm -hmm. And um, it was brilliant. And I think certainly that, that has sort of changed the game a bit having Liz um, do her talk and at the end of it get a bit of a standing ovation, I've never seen that at a McTaggart. Usually it's people need to be shaken to sort of be woken up. And, um, and so I think, uh, you know, we have talked in Sky and certainly me and the team have talked very openly about what we want to achieve and how to inspire. And if you're shy, what what inspiring looks like if you're a shy person. Um, uh, what... Um, and how you can inspire and uh, thrill 
Uh, but how you can do that while at the same time looking after a budget, being strategic about where something's going. Um, and certainly, you know, when life's short, I want to absolutely make a difference. And I want to make a difference so that people's rainy Tuesday night is brilliant. That's if, why I'm in TV. If the, if the Guardian is right, uh, Elizabeth's speech was a pitch to run Sky. Would you like to have her as a, as a boss? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, okay. I, I, I love Jeremy Darroch, but um, I, think, uh, I think everyone I work with, I have a kind of no arseholes rule. Um, and I wouldn't have someone work for me who I wouldn't work for uh, later. Um, I wouldn't work for someone who's brilliant, who doesn't share my values of being kind, firm, fair, inspirational, and take risks. I, I just wouldn't have someone on the team. And I've had people on the team uh, who, who have been like that, and they've gone pretty quickly. And it's really important, I think, because um, a wrong attitude can be um, infectious in a bad way. And I hate toxic people. I think if you're negative, if you're slow, if you spend time delighting in putting down others, we're just not going to get on. OK. Now, um, you were voted or, or listed as the most important person in the commissioning in British television uh, not so long so, ago. Yeah. Congratulations on that. In terms of uh, your relationship with the Indies, wh what is the pecking order? Where do the Indies go first? When do they come to you? Sorry, I, have to laugh. Um, I might need a tissue. Sorry, I just laughed through my nose. That's really <laughs> unpleasant. Um, <laughs> so... Um, uh, where's the packet? What, what do you mean? Like, did, well, would just, they come just, to us I'm, I'm just yeah. curious, yeah. Where, 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 and, and has it changed? What, what, is there a pecking order? Is there a direction, I think, a path um, the Indies take? The brilliant Indies will tell every controller that they're the first port, port of call. Do you believe them? Absolutely never. <laughs> um, uh, but, um, God, I just don't know. I mean, I think because... Do you think you're going up, up the pecking yeah, order? Yeah, definitely. I think the best I can do and the best the commissioners can do is um, lay out what we want, roughly, the rough area, and we could say, like, here's the marquee, you do the party. Um, uh, and our party is going to be pretty different to the BBC's. Um, we're not there to culturally enrich the nation. We're not there to bring on new talent. Um, and other certain channels have, uh, you know, a tradition of doing, uh, you know, Channel 4 are doing Mental Health Week. Um, uh, and that, that is a part of their remit. Um, and that's a particular type of party, isn't it? And um, uh, that's not our party. That sounds weird. What a strange yeah. analogy. Everyone's kind of envisioning a yeah. mental health party. Um, <laughs> but um, I suppose what, what I do like and what works for us is when we get um, talent, whether it's someone unknown, but usually it's someone known, and we get them in and together explore uh, life. You know, we talk about what they're into. Um, we jointly try and come up with something new. Uh, so, you know, we've, uh, I think I've talked before about Sarah Hooper, who did, did Mount Pleasant. She came in with a particular, she wrote Mount Pleasant. She came in with a particular script. We talked about it. And then we just talked about relationships and life and family. And then from that, we thought, actually, you're definitely onto something with this new thing. And certainly, as a commissioner, your job is to um, prod and provoke, but cr create something sort of like a genie type thing out of nothing and draw out of people what they didn't realise they kind of had in them. Um, it's not really to, to buy something they hand over across a table. Um, and, and I think we work differently. I know we work differently uh, to other places. We definitely do. I was looking at this, the, the televisuals uh, industry poll, and, and you did very well uh, as a broadcaster to deal with. You also were regarded as the fifth hardest broadcaster to deal with. Really? So I said, poor terms of trade, no interest in the long-term health of independence. Oh, really? Yeah. Although fifth out of, a, out of the broadcasters, I suppose, is quite low down. Any response yeah, to, um, to that? Yeah, I mean, I we work with 112... Uh, broadcasters, that is a statistic I've learned. 112, oh, sorry, indies, indies. <laughs> not broadcasters. Um, and um, so we work with a lot of indies. I don't think they'd work with us if they didn't enjoy it. I think um, I've yet to find an indie who's not delighted at us investing all this money in the industry. Um, I think our term, we, we have terms, and if people don't like our terms, and they vary, if people don't like our terms, they're free to work elsewhere. And fortunately, we've got um, you know, major, major indies from, you know, Kudos, Princess, 2-4, uh, Talkback, you know, Hattrick. We've got major indies working with us, and I think 
I think we sort of, what's it? What's the phrase like? Proof of the pudding is in the watching the channel. Okay. Um, let's talk uh, 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 about the, the range of channels you're now in charge. And uh, if I may, uh, we'll show a, a quick clip of Clever Dicks. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to put words in your mouth, but would it be a fair <clears throat> assumption to make that Sky Atlantic struggled with some inappropriate early commissions? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's funny, when I look at Clever Dicks, it completely fulfills Sky Atlantic's dream of groundbreaking cinematic world-class <laughs> TV. <laughs> it's big. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly big. Um, yeah, so, uh, so Sky, you know, Sky Atlantic's there to be cinematic and world-class world cinematic TV. Um, problem is, loads of the HBO content is post-watershed, you know, and sometimes like 10 o'clock level. Um, it was important to us that we run stuff as they're meant to be seen. So we ran Curb Your Enthusiasm, the, the uh, cunt episode, with every single uh, C word intact. And, um, and I think, you know, if people pay for us, we need to give them what they want. And um, I think uh, certainly at launch, we were, I wanted to do several things. I wanted to show that we also do British stuff. I also wanted to run stuff pre Watershed. I also, it's really important to me, we take um, a creative risk. And, uh, and we commissioned that. It was a punt. Did it work? No. But, you know, it's, it's not the end of the world. I mean, we didn't speak... We didn't... You know, on a sort of serious point, which I probably made already, is that at Sky, it is so fast. We talk sort of 5% about the things that don't work, and we talk 95% about the things that, they, that, that do. So when I first turned up to Sky, you know, someone said to me, oh, it's going really well. One of my bosses said, oh, it's, it's going really well. And I was like, uh, this was after about a year. I was like, oh, yeah, cool. You know, this hasn't worked. This has worked. I was just trying to show that I wasn't a complete um, uh, quam, or whatever the word is. And, um, <clears throat> uh, and um, they were like, why are you focusing on what doesn't work? And I think because we've got a tradition of R&D and a kind of a tradition of developing software, by its very nature, 95 things are not going to work. But so long as the five are, you know, Sky Anytime Plus, Sky Go, Sky... Uh, <coughs> uh, uh, Sky Plus, Sky Anytime, Sky Go, and, and 3D, then you're fine, aren't you? You can afford can, 95 mistakes. Um, Sky Arts, which I, I, I found that personally uh, very interesting to see how, how that's uh, changed. Are you, are you happy with what's going on there? And have you got the, the mix right between popular culture and more classical culture? I think so. I mean, it might be... It's, um, it's great to have this opportunity just to fill people in on what might happen with the channels, um, if that's all right. Yeah, it's not by all means, absolutely. <clears throat> so I think Sky Art's really, really happy what's happening under James Hunt. I think him and his team are fantastic. They haven't had much budget. What they've done to create, c cause a bit of a stir and be maverick and do it with style is great. So all hats off to him. Giving him more budget... The channel's gone up the EPG. I think its ratings are up 250% or something. You know, it's like a crazy figure. So more people are coming to it. It's in, in the past six months alone, reach has gone from 2 million to 6 million a month. So it's a success story. Um, I think going forward, um, we need to, I need to, and uh, me and James need to keep one another in check so we keep being maverick. Um, <clears throat> there's that worry, isn't there, that what comes with success is moderation. So what we need is big um, big, big uh, shows uh, in that we wouldn't have a problem spending three million quid on one series. Um, you know, when we've done well on Sky Arts, Playhouse Presents, <coughs> excuse me, Playhouse Presents, um, we, we saved all our marketing resource, we got all our PR firepower, which at Sky is pretty incredible, and we scheduled Sky, uh, you know, Playhouse Presents with, you know, Brenda Blethyn and Tom Jones and, and major names. And it, was the high, it became the highest rating show ever. So you sort of think, actually, let's do more of that. Let's do fewer things, huge. So that's what's going to happen on Sky Arts. I think the aficionados on Sky Arts will find all their stuff on Sky Arts 2. On Sky Arts 1, we're, we're not going to become super populist, but we are going to keep a maverick strain in everything we do. I think... On Sky Atlantic, the big thing is we, we need huge drama. I'm not going to steal Anne Mensah's thunder, the, uh, uh, our 4am dancing head of drama. But, um, but I think her plan, and, and I support her on this, is we, are, we won't be able to do loads of drama, but what we do, um, hopefully, will change the face of British drama. And she can go into that in more detail in about a month. Um, and 
It's very, very, very exciting. And I thought I was going to be able to announce it here. Oh, you've got it. I've got I can't. Give a I have to show you. Bit more and also, than the that. producer said, don't make announcements. So I was like, well, why am I telling you no? But anyway, it's Anne's baby. It's for her to announce. <laughs> she's got the plan and she's, she's got the relationships and talent to do it. So, absolutely, it's her, her moment. I think as you saw a moment in comedy, you're absolutely going to see a moment in drama. No question. And what about uh, other trends you might see in other broadcasters? Uh, sending people to islands, uh, locking people in houses and letting them go. Any of those things excite you, uh, interest you? Yeah, well, we, we had Phil Edgar Jones, who's the master of, of cruelty. And, um, <coughs> you know, and he was in charge of um, uh, Big Brother, creative director of Endemol. And also what people tend to forget about his CV is that he did Shattered and Space Cadets and, um, you know, crazy big scale things, as well as uh, the craziest in Big Brother. Um, I think with, with Phil working out what we do across all the channels, I think the main two places where entertainment will play out will be Sky One and Sky Living. I think on Sky One, we have talked a lot about do we get out of the studio? I think uh, Got to Dance is fantastic. Very pleased that we got Aston from JLS, which is great booking, little Aston. Um, uh, and, uh, but we're going to probably look at stuff outside the studio. Um, and the thing we, we really need is something of enormous scale. Um, uh, Are we sort of a, an X Factor type thing? Uh, or yeah, I mean, um, someone used a phrase recently which just really made me giggle. They said, I'm bored of the whittle. <laughs> and um, that kind of whittling process down. Yeah. Um, and I think also where the sky is there to give people stuff additional to free. And on free TV, there's loads of whittle yeah. shows. Yeah. And, you know, we've got, we've got one or two. Um, I think something that is, you know, a big scale where people go... Jesus, I cannot believe Sky are doing something that big. Are they mental? I think that's what excites both me and Phil. Um, I think also, it's just on Sky Living, just so people know, <clears throat> again, it's for Antonio Herford-Jones, really, to go into the detail, who's the great new head of the channel. But we're going to shift from a channel that made shows for women to a channel that makes shows that women happen to watch. And it's, it, that so, might sound a bit semantic-y, but... On BBC Three, when I ran that, I made a decision not to make shows just for young people, like, ooh, I'm young, or uh, where's my pocket money, I guess, which might do well among young people, but made broad shows that young people happen to watch, like Little Britain and Gavin and Stacey. Um, and the past two weeks on Living have been a taste of what living should feel like. So as well as Rihanna, you know, biggest star in the world... Disappointing ratings, though? Well, I... I can go back to the answer I referred <laughs> no. some moment ago. Point made, point made. You know, yeah, I think yeah. the fact that it was trending and it's the biggest star in the world, I'd love to see a channel controller at Edinburgh. I wouldn't, actually. But, uh, you know, find me a channel controller at Edinburgh who will turn down Rihanna in her own series. So, they don't exist. Um, but, you know, the past two weeks on Living, we've got uh, Big Fact 10, we've got comedy coming through, you know, with, um, uh, with Gates and Mount Pleasant. Really, really happy about that. Darren Litton, who wrote Benny Dorm, has written, written his next big comedy for just, Living, so it's going to broaden out. For clarity, Sky, Sky One and Living, I mean, what, what is the difference that you have for the audiences? What are the, what Sky are the, One's family, yeah. Sky Living's female skewing. Strike back family? Uh, yeah, actually, yeah, I think um, a lot of uh, teenagers watch it. I, I, mean, don't, I don't know if we've got the... Can we run, show, show we've got a strike back clip, I think, it's just a very brief one. <laughs> family viewing? <laughs> I mean, you know, what I mean is Sky One will attract different audiences at different times, but fundamentally, yeah, it's stuff that the whole household will love. I mean, I'm so proud of Strike Back. It's, you know, co-commission with Cinemax. It's action, which no one's yeah. doing in British TV. When we, we do a test, which is our equivalent of audience appreciation, it's called the Passion Scores, and when you ask fans of Strike Back what they rate it out of 10, it's the highest uh, passion... It's the show that fans are most passionate about. It beats an idiot abroad. Um, and, you know, we commissioned in 10 one hours at a big cost with Left Bank. I, I love it. It's, and we're going to, that's going to be a, a bit of a mainstay on Sky One. OK, um, time's running on, so I, I, I slightly changed the tone. Okay. Okay. Wacky as any. Well, first of all, Twitter. Why do you waste your time on Twitter? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think because I was frustrated having to mediate my relationship with customers via journalists who had an agenda is one reason. I think another reason is it's quite fun, and why should I be denied having a bit of fun? Um, uh, and, you know, if someone from, you know, Ipswich emails and says, why does the Sky One do this? I can email back and say, actually, we do it for this reason. Sorry, we got it wrong. And people are like, blimey, you've actually responded. And I think, actually, without sounding funny, good on me. 
I'm really happy with that. <laughs> and, um, and if I've if I fucked up, I'll, uh, as we did, you know, stellar transmission went all wrong. And, you know, I just got straight onto Twitter and said, we're doing our best, bear with us. And, and you could see within the course of the, um, the hour and a half of the nightmare that it was, people saying good on you, you know, apart from someone who said you were the devil's sperm, <laughs> which is a sort of specific thing. I was like, I'm sure, I'm sure if the devil was going to have a child, he wouldn't make the worst he does pull, pull audio from Stella. But anyway. Um, in terms of... Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> How are things with um, RDF? Will they be getting many commissions? Funny enough, we're chatting to RDF about, um, about a, a big show. Um, yeah, I, God, it was so long ago. Um, funny enough, a, a year after they fired me, uh, it, it was at Edinburgh, and um, is it Jolie, I think, who was the COO? Uh, we were at a party, and she said, can I have a cigarette? And the last time I saw her was when she fired me. And she didn't actually say, please. She went, can I have a cigarette? <laughs> and um, so I gave her a cigarette. And she went, oh, my God, I can't believe how nice you are. And I said, well, it's, it's not my values that are going to be affected. I'm a nice person. So, you know, and, and also cigarettes give you cancer. No, no, it's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> that is a joke. That's a joke. <laughs> that is just a joke, can I just say. That's a stupid thing to say. <laughs> but no, I, I won't. I, I, <laughs> You know what, of all the good that I've just said in this whole thing. <laughs> um, that's really bad. Press office, I am so sorry. I've done so was, well, for, spirit, like, so a, well for an hour. I, I've, got, I've got to get a couple more in because I just think uh, they may be equally amusing. Um, uh, I, we are working with RDF, I wouldn't have a problem semi -serious with Semi-serious note, and it's, it puts you in a horrible position, this question, but could you envisage yourself one day going back to the BBC? Uh, probably not, actually. Um, I know often people say, never say never, and, uh, you know, or, um, uh, and people always say, well, it's very dangerous to say on a public platform, uh, but I think it's pretty unlikely. I, lo I love Sky. Uh, I love what it does. I love how it treats people. Suggestions so. of maybe looking at, uh, across the Atlantic? Would, that, is, is, would you...? Um, yeah, potentially I would. Um, uh, my, you know, my two sons are 10 and 11. Uh, my first priority is being, in life is being a dad. And so um, I'm going to be in Britain until they're 18. But yeah, in seven years' time, I'll definitely, uh, I'll definitely be open to working in the States. And you know, we, we, I go to the States quite a lot. We co commissioned, we just co commissioned Dracula with NBC for Sky Living, uh, Cinemax with HBO. Um, yeah, I, I love how people work in the States. Uh, but I also love the mentalness and the sense of humour in Britain. Okay. So. Um, I've had two requests, or two people ask me, is it true you have a six-pack, and if so, can they see it? <laughs> no. <laughs> but you're Ish doing... and no. <laughs> You've got a broken rib, though. That's not you from fighting, a... or... Because uh... boxing's your thing, yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah I'm really into boxing. Um, but uh, no, 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 it's from me being an idiot, throwing myself on a water slide in, uh, in Spain last week. With so my not kid. fighting, OK. No, okay. no, I was, I was trying to show off. And, um, yeah, so... Key there is don't show off. Um, and last one from me, uh, just out of interest, uh, new director general coming in. Well, would you have a message for him? Any, any at all? Uh, no, you do your job, I'll do mine. Yeah, I mean, uh, go, yeah, good luck to him. He's a nice guy. No, uh, uh, no, not really. Uh, it was, but no, I do. It's his job. Okay. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, I have thoroughly enjoyed our conversation. I'd love to hear some uh, questions uh, from our audience here. What do we have? Anything around. This is the trouble. I've got one contact lens. So there we go. Gentleman there with a beard. Why have you got one contact lens? It's a lot. Like, uh, I've got cataracts. <laughs> oh, so, right. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, so. And it's like, two lenses I can't actually see, but one I can. <laughs> it's bizarre, but not very well, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> go on, fire away, sir. Thanks. Um, my name's Alex. I work for an app development agency. Uh, we also produce a lot of games. Um, I saw the work you guys did with Simbad, the online game. Really liked it. Um, I wondered whether Sky are going to be commissioning more games and more apps along with their programming. Good question. Good question. Um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, we'd love to, if people pitch them, yeah. I mean, I think I've probably been a bit remiss, um, to be honest. I've tried to get the channels really working. And, um, you know, I would love a million pound drop on our channel. Uh, uh, that because of the show. interactivity. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's brilliant. I think the interactivity on Big Brother is incredible. Um, and, um, uh, you know, the, the game on Simbad's cool. Uh, I'm really chuffed with Simbad as well, by the way. Um, but, yeah, I'd, I'd be totally into looking at games. Um, Phil Edgar Jones, our head of entertainment, used to present a computer game programme, people might... People, uh, he's here, so I don't want to embarrass him. <laughs> but, um, uh, so I know he personally loves games. OK, OK. <laughs> Anything else? 
nothing else. Stop. Hello. Hello. Um, to use a, a football analogy, uh, I think before you joined Sky, um, uh, Sky One was a bit like QPR, that you know, they had a lot of money, but it still wasn't very good. Right. And now, actually, what you've done is you're more like the Man City, and you know, you, you, money doesn't automatically bring success, and now you've actually delivered success with that money. And to, to help us understand your vision for where you want Sky to go, what do you want to be next? Do you want to be the Man United and to be the biggest team in the world, or do you want to be... More like Arsenal, who you know don't always come for, don't always come first, but you know play the best football. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not into football at all, so I'm so glad you explained it, Lucas. What, what it all means. Um, I think uh, um, I want Sky. I want first and foremost, I want people to say I love Sky, in the same way that people say I love Apple. Um, uh, I want people to really feel passionately about what we do love dealing with us, um, like, uh, you know, I think Jimmy Mulville said, Sky is the new Channel 4. Yeah. I think when Channel 4 first came along, you'd love it. You'd love it for what it stood for, even if you didn't love the shows. Uh, you know, 20 years ago, you had that, and they've used that brand resonance for, for 20 years. Um, uh, however long it's been going. I really want that on Sky. I think we've got that on Sky Sports, Sky Movies, Sky News. I think we're starting to get it on Sky One, actually. We've certainly got it on Sky Atlantic. One in four Sky subscribers put it in there top 10. Uh, sorry, one in four Sky, sub Sky subscribers said they joined Sky for Sky Atlantic. Um, so we definitely got it with that. I think um, this is terrible, but I would probably compare what I want to do more with orchestras. That I think apparently the Berlin Philharmonic is, um, uh, Simon Rattle said, is when he's conducted it, is very high achieving, very, very, very temperamental, but has regular moments and flashes of creative brilliance. And it's difficult to control. Um, it's a major name, but it, it is, um, it's going to give you something you've just never seen before and, or heard before. And, and I suppose that's what I'd want. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. Okay, okay. Anything else? Come on, wakey, wakey, people. Got your man here. Smurf. <laughs> As John Noe lovingly calls you. <laughs> that's, that's the nicest thing he calls me. <laughs> Anything else? No? no? Anything else you'd like to tell us? No. I want to know more about the drama. Um, about well, drama we're, we're commissioning? Yeah, yeah. Oh, right, yeah. Oh, well... well um, but the stuff you can't tell us. <laughs> I mean, I suppose we definitely... So in terms of Indies, what we're looking for, we um, could definitely do with... I love an idiot abroad, so I think Doofus Factual could be great. And Celia Taylor is the person to pitch to for that, both for Sky One and Sky Living. I think we've, on Sky Atlantic, we've commissioned um, Nick Broomfield to do feature-length factual. And Celia is definitely in the market for world-class, very chewy, high-end um, uh, feature-length factual. Um, to play on Sky One? Uh, to play on Sky Atlantic. Sky Atlantic. Um, on, uh, in fact, tense, um, we love Britain and Ireland's Next Top Model, and modelling's great. What else can we do in modelling? Um, and fashion. Um, I really want us to have a modern view of women that isn't that women are defined solely by sh obsession with shoes and handbags and makeup, but you know, British women love men as well, love, love going for a drink, love having a laugh. We need a more modern view of women. Um, and so um, I'd love that to come through and for people to pitch to Antonia. Um, we definitely need long running pre watershed comedy for Sky One. Um, Spy is coming back, it's a really big hit for us. Uh, more of that, please. Um, I think in terms of comedy tone, we could do with more what we've been calling, da you know, sort of daft, silly stuff. So um, uh, with a, a big, with the can play in the States as well as here. Um, uh, in terms of reality, we absolutely would be interested in reality for Sky One and possibly for Sky Living. Um, and we will... In any... I mean, it's such a yeah, broad... it is. I mean, I think on out. Sky One, if it's about family, it'd be a range of age groups, probably, um, and it would probably have a lasting effect. So, um, so it wouldn't be a flash-in-the-pan one-joke series. Um, so, you know, for instance, we've talked about do you do a reality show in a town or a farm or on an island or in a city that's run down? We wouldn't do that because Channel 4 have run, done that, but... Do you do uh, uh, something big scale that, that is embedded in Britain um, that will have a resonance for years to come? I'd love. Um, I think we're always open to the crazy. 
particularly on Atlantic. <laughs> Hundaby, amazing comedy with Julia Davis, starts the week after next. And um, please come to us and feel licensed to go crazy and, and play out your crazy bone with us. <laughs> so That's <speak>. disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> sure, I'm trying to go through the I list know, here. No, no, you um, uh, oh, um, in Factual, you know, Ross Kemp with Extreme World is a great show for us. I think more, uh, we need other tough shows in the mix of Sky One. So hopefully that's a big enough, shop, is that a big enough shopping list. For people? I reckon that's a good enough shopping list. Sure. Stuart Murphy, thank you very much Pleasure. for giving up your time. Likewise, <laughs> <laughs>